I'd like to call the June 30th meeting of the uh, school committee to order. This morning we have a light agenda. We're going to continue our discussion and perhaps take a vote on whether Reading, uh, Reading Public Schools will start using the park exam uh, for three through grades three through eight in the fall, or whether we'll stick with MCAS for an additional year. We had some great conversation at our last school committee meeting. We had so much discussion that we decided, hey, let's uh, let's take in everything we heard. Let's give it some uh, a few days to percolate, and then we'll get back together this morning. And here we are. So before I before I start, though, it is our practice. Is there public input that isn't on the agenda this morning? Seeing none, uh, quickly, Dr. Doherty, I know you had vacation, and I, I don't think you want to report on that. <laughs> okay, well, it was uh, magical. I bet it was. <laughs> well put. Any other input before we get going? Great. So um, again, I'd like to thank the community for all of the email and all of the um, polite, spirited, passionate communications we've received over the last, going on a month, I guess. It's certainly been an interesting talk, topic to learn about and to discuss. Um, I would like to make the following suggestion this morning, just because um, we would like to try to keep this somewhat, somewhat, not brief, but how about uh, controlled? Maybe that's a better word. Um, I'd like to offer each committee member perhaps a moment or two to talk about where their um, where their head is at, what their thinking is. I'd like to give Dr. Doherty an opportunity to make any comments he'd like, or Mr. Martins as well. Uh, and again, Mr. Martins, thank you so much for all of your communication and information. Uh, if there's anyone in the uh, in the audience that would like to speak this morning, we'll give them an opportunity, and then hopefully we'll we'll be ready for some sort of an action. Morning. With that said, is there a committee member that might like to share their thoughts this morning? Don't all raise your hands at once. <laughs> Mrs. Doxer, would you like to start? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I am thrilled to see so many people here from the administration and the teachers. And um, I would like to say just a little something about this journey, about the Park versus MCAS decision. Um, I have been really interested and actually happy that there's been so many engaged people that I've gotten so many emails, thoughtful emails, emails that show that they have tried to be educated, um, that they care very much about discussing with us what happens in the schools. Um, that being said, I also want to say I have to, full disclosure, I'm told in open meeting I have to give full disclosure, is that I am not a big fan of standardized tests. I feel that there's so much more to who a child or a student or a learner is than what can be put in multiple choice tests. And even with the MCAS, whose goal was to broaden that scope, and include writing and include, I actually worked with someone who was one of the designers of the MCAS. Um, but the intent for the MCAS I know is never to have teachers teach the test, but it grew into something um, that it wasn't ever intended to be in a lot of ways where um, there had to be teaching to the test in order to have kids know what the content of what was going to be on the test, when it was going to be on the test, and because it grew into something for which people were evaluated and there were rewards and, and pun I won't, not punishments, but you know, if you didn't make your growth, then there were problems with it. Um, and I just want to say out there, my full disclosure, that's not my idea of learning and assessment of learning, my idea of Assessment of learning is something like Vygotsky, where you take people to the next level, where assessment includes learning and discussion and enabling, not disenabling, not um, putting impediments to learning in there. Um, I also want to say um, that there were, I'm, I'm hoping that there's a chance for questions, because I took down questions from my all the emails that I got, and I'm hoping that there will be a chance for that, but I'm not going to include that in this, I guess, um, my little thing. 
I also want to say that in all my reading, it's endless. You can go link to link to link. In all the emails I got, there were links, there were links upon links, some of which led to very disturbing things. I do not think that the park or the Common Core is, or the frameworks for that matter, are an effort to brainwash our students, inculcate our morals. Um, it's not a communist effort. It's not to equip our students for a planned economy. I don't believe any of that. I have worked too closely with too many of our amazing teachers and educators to ever even, I'm not going there. Um, and that leads me to the next thing that I want to say is that in all that reading, I was humbled. I was humbled by the decision at hand. It's only about, only about the standardized tests that we are required to do. I cannot opt not to do a standardized test. Not, that's not the vote at hand. The vote this year is to, um, right now, is whether or not we continue on the trajectory that we were on in terms of the park pilot last year, the feedback we gave, and utilizing the upgraded test this year in order to give our feedback, this is the way I view my decision, in order to give our feedback to continue being a part of the decision as to whether to use the park or not, and to have our kids be more experienced at the online testing. Um, and I have people that I trust, that I look up to, that I discuss with, that I share my real concerns with, that I've asked my questions and to the TV, to the public, your questions to. And I feel as though it's really important for me to listen and listen very hard to what the recommendation of the people is on the front lines. And so I am right now in favor of going with the park. I'm just putting full disclosure, I'm in favor of the park, both because of my reading, my experience with the MCAS, um, and because I truly believe that our educators would not recommend us going with the park if they didn't think it was in the best interests of our students, the education in our community, the families supporting the parents, the teachers, I just, I know that that would not be the recommendation if it were not what you educators thought was, new educators thought was best. And so I guess thank you for this opportunity to sure. share my thoughts. Excellent, thank you. Hey, Mrs. Webb. Thank you. Um, Chairman Caruso, and thanks to all the uh, teachers who are here and principals and Craig and John, and I know that um, actually all of our administrative team had vacation last week, and um, this whole dialogue and debate definitely um, presumed and pervaded that vacation time, and I just want to say that I, um, I appreciate that these, everyone in this room is an incredible professional that doesn't stop working when the day is over because it does seem like the day is not ever over. So I really want to say that I appreciate that and I actually apologize that, um, that you know, this uh, worked out in this manner. Um, but I think that the time to process the information was important for the board. Um, what I would, really, I would really like to hear today is to hear from some of the administrators who have joined us at our meeting on Monday. You know, we heard from John and from Craig reflecting the administrative councils and educators um, input and I really want to thank Craig for um, and I, I actually think that if I didn't have to go to work this morning I would say that I would read this whole thing this e th what Craig um, wrote here in terms of well, addressing everything but I think it's important because it really helps to synthesize a lot of the questions that did arise, and Ms. Stockster talked about a lot of the sort of the, the things that you can read. Um, and I do think that it's, um, it's incredibly important that th this is focused on what's in the best interest of our students and our district, not what's going on nationally, not what's going on in other communities. And I think the one question, the one issue, and I know Craig's, um, Craig, you've addressed it somewhat here, that seemed to be a 
sort of a gnawing issue was, well, what if the State Board of Education doesn't decide to go with Park next year? And I guess in the dialogue this morning, I'd certainly like to hear some perspectives on that from the, our educators and administrators. And I know that Craig sort of addressed that in this. Uh, but I, um, I had a lot of experience with MCAS improvement when I was on the board previously. I think uh, worked on the uh, one of the subcommittees. And in my, my perspective, other than the student growth percentile and, you know, periodic sort of changing up of the questions, fundamentally, there hasn't been the improvement in MCAS that was needed. And especially the test delivery, that was one of the biggest issues was the test delivery, uh, the time consuming, uh, amount of time it consumed, and the fact that you could not get the results back in a timely manner to do anything constructive about it for students in that year or really get the leverage going even um, over the summer to have teachers work on any curriculum-based improvement. And, the, and staying with the MCAS is another, another year of that. So I, uh, uh, and to be really clear, also Mrs. Doxer said it, but I've had other people ask me, well, why do we have to take the standardized test? This is a public school, it's a public school district, we take the standardized test. So that's, that's, that's where we are, that's where we live. We need to do what's right for students and continuing to step forward. And I am not in favor of staying, um, staying with the MCAS when we have an opportunity to move to something that will help our students and our teachers move to what is going to be the next step and the next direction in terms of standardized testing. Thank you. Good morning. Thank Good morning. Um, so. I, like I think my fellow committee members, have spent the last two weeks spending hours and hours and hours learning more about MCAS and PARC and state assessments than I ever thought possible. Over the last week, in an effort to understand how other communities are tackling this, I have spent some time looking at what our peer communities, the, the list of communities we identified, um, I think last year, last fall, as being similar to us. Um, so this is the group we kind of look at as educational peer communities. Um, and not surprisingly, about half are taking PARC, about half are taking MCAS, and about half have delayed it or I can't find online what they've decided. So it, there's really nothing, I think what I'm seeing in the broader state level is community struggling with the decision. And I certainly have struggled with the decision over the last couple of weeks. Um, so, so here's where I'm at. I created a list, a pro and con list of data points how what are the things that we need to consider and so one is do we have the technology yes we have the technology to do either so that's a draw time and testing matters a lot to me um, like Ms. Doxer I have some concerns about the standardized testing the role that it plays in education across the board it's something that concerns me so um, initially it looked like Park was going to meet many more hours in testing than it looked like no MCAS actually is many more hours in testing and now I feel like it, it's a bit of a draw we don't exactly know next year how long park is going to take to administer we just don't um, in the long term a computerized test definitely promises to be shorter so I am fully on board with the trajectory towards a computerized test but for next year I don't know that I don't know that I'm clear that which one would be more hours out of instruction and in assessment um, we talked a lot last week about data privacy. It seems to me that this is an issue with both PARC and MCAS. So I'm not sure I have enough information on either of that to push me one way or the other. Long-term viability matters, right? So what are we going to go with? I think we know we're not going to go with MCAS, but we don't know that we're going to go with PARC. You can't make a decision based on that, so we don't know. And then what are other districts doing? I've already shared. It's a draw. So those are all ones that I basically have to put aside and say I don't think I can make a decision based on that. When I think about the MCAS, I think the benefits are reliable data for one more year. We have historical data that we know and have used and gives us consistency. We know how to administer the MCAS. We've been doing it for 17 years. The community support for it, at least what I've heard back, has been very vocal. So I talked to one parent who um, felt good about the park and was ready to go there. I talked with one parent for over an hour on the phone at the end of it, she said, I don't know how you're going to make this decision. So she was a draw. And then email, phone call, and one-on-one -on -one conversations with about 15 who were supportive of staying with MCAS. Um, we know that the MCAS questions are vetted for curriculum, academic, and developmental appropriateness. We've got years and years of background on it. 
We know that it's a consistent experience for kids. I have a, an incoming third grader who on the day of um, on move up day, when I picked him and his buddy up from school and said, how was move up day? Third grade is going to be awesome. We're going to have four field trips. We're going to learn about electricity. We're going to go to Plymouth Plantation and we're going to take the MCAS. Second graders know what's coming. It, th these tests loom large in these kids' minds. And I think it is important that we put something in front of them, particularly right. the younger ones, that, that we have confidence that will be a comfortable experience for them. Um, so that's, those are all the reasons why I'm inclined to go with the MCAS. The one thing I keep coming back to is the Administrative Council wants to move with the park, and that weighs very, very heavily on me, very heavily. But I feel like I have to vote my conscience, and I feel like the safer route is to stick with MCAS for one more year, see how the park pilot goes, and then make a decision as the state makes theirs. So that's where I'm at. That was excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Robinson, any comments? Yeah. Can you just give us another update on the, on the pilot and how that were there any any pro I know we talked about it uh. I I can give you an update I think I would like yeah, yeah. the administrators mm -hmm. that like field tested it as well um, and the technology integration we had a couple we have a couple technology integration specialists here who were a major part of that um, the first week was difficult because like any new technology platform you're learning the bugs of it um, so in March, that first, that first go-around with the different schools, I know there were some rough spots. Um, from that point forward, though, once we figured out how to do it and once, you know, Pearson made their adjustment uh, and the state made their adjustment um, to what, what school districts were, were inquiring and asking questions about, the, the, the second round of testing in, in uh, May and June was much smoother. But I can talk I'll, I'll let maybe start with Janet and Kathy and then the principals um, so basically what Dr. Doherty said is accurate one of the things that we did when we tested the when we ran the pilot was to test all types of devices which clearly made we, we pushed the limit on what would work to find out basically what the most <laughs> what the best um, solution was so we used iPads we used laptops and we used desktops across in different um, pockets of the district. And um, the purpose of it was to find out um, what we needed to know for the going forward. And as far as the technology, these kids were very ready. And uh, I'm just going to tell you one little anecdote. We were at one of the elementary schools, and the students were at laptops at their desks, no problem set them up so they were in their own space and in their own comfort level space. It was snack time and they were instructed not to touch the keyboards while they were having snack. And of course there was one non-compliant. And I, I went up to him and gently said, I believe that you were asked to wait and have your snack away from the, not to touch the keyboard. And he looked at me very uh, confidently and said, it's okay as long as I don't type in this code and hit enter, Nothing will go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he was he's he was right. <laughs> they were extremely comfortable with the environment and the devices. Um, we did that. As far as the time taken, second time round, it was so quick. And i and Kathy can speak to that. I was actually the um, coordinator for the district. Um, the high school was, did not have technology involved in the park trial. So I was at all the various schools um, overseeing what was going on. But Kathy was at every elementary school, so maybe you can speak to it. Okay. Well, yes, um, as Dr. Doherty said, the first uh, week that we had uh, the, the technology with, uh, and Joanne, I just spoke uh, at the meeting last week, uh, there were a, uh, were a couple glitches, but those were, again, it was, uh, it was new. It was new to us. And again, once we figured it out, I, I thought it went well. Um, the students, I was very surprised, but they, you know, they just took it and ran with it. And um, as far as ta uh, taking the time it took to take the test, I would say that the majority of students finished well within um, the amount of time that was, was given to them, and very few had to go um, into that extra 15 or 20 minutes that they got. Um, we did try different methods, as Janet said, um, and each school did things differently. Uh, we used the lab at, uh, at Wood End, at Killam, the students took the test in their classroom at their desks. 
at uh, Barrows, we had uh, a combination of, of uh, iPads and uh, desktops in the library at the same time. So we had two classes uh, taking the test at the same time. And I would say that it, 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 I was pretty pleased with the way everything, uh, well, everything turned out. And the second time around in May when we took it again, I thought it went so much, you know, all the bugs had been worked out and everything went, went smoothly. Great. Thank you very much. Yes? I have a question. One of the questions that was asked of me um, via email and in person was about the younger children. There was some disbelief that the third graders could really be so comfortable with the technology that it wouldn't interfere necessarily with what they can show that they can do or show that they know. Can you speak just a little bit? And I think you did. Your anecdote was probably about the youngest. But it was the fourth grader here. OK. Can you? Uh, one of the things, if they're very agile with the technology, uh, one of the things that we were very pleased with was whenever there was a question, technology question, they knew to, ha to raise their hand, and they knew exactly what to ask. They really totally understood what whatever the roadblock was they were confronting. They knew what that was. Um, I believe um, Ms. King talked a little bit about the entering the, the numbers versus the text. Um, they figured it out. We didn't. Okay. They, they helped. They, they knew exactly. I mean, one, one student was struggling with this, and I walked over, and um, I, within five minutes, three minutes, we had picked up on the fact that what the, what the issue was by just observing one of the other students, and they, we were able to explain it to them, and they were all set. They really were comfortable, and I didn't see any frustration levels at all um, with the interacting with the devices. They're, they're really comfortable. So Linda, can, I just had third graders, so I can give you the third grade example. So uh, one of the great things um, that the park offers is a chance for the students to practice through the process before they actually take the test. So we went into the computer lab, uh, went through a fairly quick tutorial, just like you would um, with any kind of testing situation. You want to get kids comfortable with the devices. You want to get them comfortable with the process. So we did a uh, practice, and actually um, what we found is the kids were very comfortable. The teachers actually needed that practice, too, because they wanted to get more comfortable with the experience. So uh, that particular practice opportunity gave the kids and the teachers an opportunity to be familiar with the test process. Uh, and then once we jumped into the pilot, uh, the kids did very well. They were very comfortable, and then even um, they had an opportunity to do some survey questions at the end of the test so they could give feedback. The process um, for the test took um, from 95 percent of the kids took less than an hour, uh, which is different than when you would take the MCAS test, which <coughs> in some cases could take all day. Uh, and the MCAS really allows you to go all day if that's really what you need. And so it was great that there was kind of this definitive time for the kids and they were finished. And that happened for uh, the third graders at Birch Meadow who took the math test. Thank you. Do you so, have further yeah. comments? Thank you, yeah. Mr. Robinson. So, <clears throat> I, I think uh, I made my uh, opinions clear all along. And it's really just been around. Uh, I'm looking for as little amount of disruption for the district as possible because uh, we have a lot of a lot of things going on right now, and I don't want everyone to get all uh, tied up in this and if things aren't working. Uh, and I've gone back and forth with uh, you know a lot of the, because of that a lot of I've been leaning towards MCAS because it's it's the devil we know and and, and it's uh, we've been with it for a while uh, but you know having said that I have an, an, an enormous amount of respect uh, for the uh, administration that's here uh, and 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 some of the comments I've just heard and and you know if they're comfortable uh, with it uh, I think it's it's my uh, responsibility as a school committee member to, to support them that's that's what we're elected for uh, and and 
and and uh, you know live by their wishes and um, you know and and that's the direction I'm heading in now. Uh, I, I have an enormous amount of respect for the individuals in here, and uh, I I don't feel I, it's my place to to uh, make a decision different than what the, the direct the direction they want to go in. Thank you. Mrs. Doxa? I have two more questions. Sure. What, one, um, I believe that has been answered, but because it's been asked to me in a certain way, I sort of want to put it out in a certain way. And that is that one of the phenomenon that we're grappling with that I want to suggest the school committee actually um, figure out how we're going to, in, in a formal way, approach this is the stress that can, and the anxiety that our students are grappling with and how it escalates and um, how it really undermines a lot of the learning. Um, and so connected with this decision, one of the questions I was asked was, well, what's the real impact? And I heard about frustration with the technology, but I just, I guess I want to take it one step further in terms of the stress and anxiety of the kids facing the park as opposed to what you've experienced with kids facing the MCAS. And then the second question will be about math. Mr. Lyons? I think I can speak to that at the middle level. In, in regard to stressors, I think it's more stressful for students to take a test with a pencil and paper than it is to take a test with a laptop or an iPad. For example, the seventh grade long comp you know, I, we often have to remind the adults who are supervising or proctoring the assessments that, you know, they'll, they'll comment at the end of the day, they'll say, gee, the kids look tired. You know, and I ask the adults and I have to remind them, when's the last time you sat down with a pen and paper and wrote for four hours? They don't even use pen, it's pencil. Hmm. So when's the last time you sat down and wrote with a pencil and paper in four hours? It, it, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive for them. They have to shift gears. You know, and, and for a lot of them, I think it does create some stress and anxiety. So I, I would argue that in giving them or t taking advantage of the technology that's available, they, they're actually more comfortable in jumping into this space. They're more efficient with it. They have greater capacity with it. And so I, I think it's, it's how they learn and demonstrate what they know every single day. So I think it's, it's more closely connected to how not only how they how they learn and how teachers teach, but also how they demonstrate what they know. And I think in re, in re, just in regard to another comment, you know, John used the term, you know, Pearson changed, the DESE changed. This is an iterative process. It's not a it's not a question of in my mind. It's not a question of whether we will shift away from MCAS. We will. It's not a matter of whether we will use technology or whether we won't. We will. So it's just, a, it's a, the greater question is when. So we know that in it being an iterative process that yeah, we have to learn by doing. And in what we're learning in, in regard to the pilot, at least at the middle level, we learned that the kids, that our fears were far greater than the students' fears. Mm -hmm. They jumped on the assessments, <laughs> they took the, the assessments, and the, it took far less instructional time to administer the park than it did MCAS. And I would, I would argue that it was far, a far decreased or less of a stressor for our students to participate in the technology assessment. And, and I say technology assessment because park or any other assessment, whether it's park or something else, they will be, we will be transitioning to assessing the standards that are in place using technology to assess those standards. So whether it's park or whether it's something else, we will be making that transition. I would also suggest that our ability to get into this space early and learn early before the stakes are higher has always been a benefit for us in, in adapting. Mm -hmm. So it's just a point to consider. Thank Great. You. Uh, Ms. Leonard, you had your hand up? Yes, the other, um, I, I would agree with Doug from the elementary side. Um, I think when you're thinking about students with anxiety and stress, one good strategy that we'll often use in an elementary classroom is don't give them the entire test. Give them one piece at a time. Because if you're somebody who could be stressed or anxious about something, you get a huge book and a big thing of blank pages. 
and oh my god, and everybody around me is writing, and what am I going to do? And you don't have that situation with the park. You have one question in front of you, one place to answer. Everybody has something different anyway, so you, you're not judging yourself of, there are, look at how far in their packet they are. He already has his reading book. So there's, there's a bit of that piece of internal anxiety that can be removed because you're not looking at this daunting thing that is just staring at you while you're judging yourself on how quickly other people are turning the pages, which I do think is helpful. And I do think the reality is it is a more natural thing for students and screens. It is a more comfortable, familiar place. So although MCAS is familiar for the adults, the students know it's coming, but it's, it's not typical to sit in a classroom silently for multiple hours in a row, not be able to ask your teacher questions and not work with your peers. That's typical learning. The, the atypicality of the MCAS is the sitting silently. You can't, you know, you have to check to even go to the bathroom and, and you know, do some of those things that are abnormal and out of a typical schedule. So even though they've heard about the test, the actual testing is not familiar to them. It's, it's much less familiar than something more similar to the park, which gives you more of a, a feedback and it responds as you turn it in. And you know, so you, you have some more engagement with the actual testing materials. And just as a side note, I think similar to what Doug was saying, I think the thing that Reading has that a, a reputation of being innovative, I think, for a reason. And I think the Board of Education isn't going to make the decision in a bubble. I think the decision has to be made by those trying it. And I think if we want to have a voice in the direction they go and have an informed something to say, and I think Reading's voice is heard by the state, the way to do that is by participating in it and then providing feedback, whether it's adjustments on it or trying something different. And I think knowing that MCAS isn't necessarily giving us the information that we need in the manner that we need it, knowing that this is closer to and that we might help inform the process rather than say, we'll wait and see what they do and then follow the direction is more of an opportunity than I think maybe we've talked about. So. Thank you. Mrs. King? Mrs. Cruz. Good morning. Um, I really appreciate the thought and time that you're all putting into this and the feedback um, is really helpful. One of the things just to tag on a little bit to what Doug was saying, when you're talking about anxiety, our students are anxious for so many other reasons, not just standardized testing. And that's something that um, none of us are taking lightly. Um, it's a focus that we've had for quite some time and something that we're gonna continue to be focused on. Around the standardized testing, obviously we try and help them to be as less stressed and feel um, the minimal amount of anxiety. Having administered both MCAS and PARC this year, um, I will tell you the students were far less stressed over the park than they were the MCAS because they had to take MCAS, then park, then MCAS, then park. Um, so our fourth graders took it twice. I will tell you I had far more stressed out parents than I did students and had a lot of phone calls around why can't they just take the park? Why do they have to take the MCAS again? Um, you're moving in that direction anyway. My kids came home exhausted. They were tired. They didn't get to do any reading, they didn't enjoy the day, which I understand, it takes a long time. Um, but I will tell you, having seen them take both in a very short period of time, the students were a lot less stressed over the park because I kept reiterating to them that, you know what, we're practicing, we're gonna help the state figure this out, we're gonna help other schools figure this out. The results don't count right now, but it's gonna help you become more familiar with the test. So they felt an important role in the process in giving their feedback and doing their best job, and I think that alleviated a lot of the stress. They also felt comfortable using the technology that we were using, and the IT team was amazingly supportive. Without them, um, you know, we would not have been successful, and I think it's because of the effort and time and commitment that they put into it. So our focus is always going to be to reduce anxiety on the part of students. It's also to reduce anxiety on the part of adults, too. And any time we do something different, it's stressful. I know, having done a principal role for two years, anytime something changes, it causes stress. So we would never want to do anything to add to the stress of students, and our focus is always going to be on what's going to be best for the kids that are in front of us. Thank you very much. I didn't get a chance to go yet. No. That's okay. Did you have another question, though? I do, but I'm glad to wait. You sure? Yeah, I'm absolutely good. good. Um, as I said in the beginning, uh, the conversation has been excellent. I've, I've learned a lot. Uh, I liked Mrs. Borowski's statements about learning more than I ever thought I would about these standardized tests, and it's been great. Uh, for me, it's actually a very simple decision. Uh, not only do I trust the administrative council, but I also trust the teachers that I've been talking to. Throughout Reading, I have not found a teacher yet 
who has said, oh, we should definitely stick with the MCAS. They've all been saying uh, park. They've all been saying it's going to change. Um, so that made my decision very simple. I do plan on supporting park and the administration. That's my comment. Your question? My other question <coughs> is um, s some of the feedback that I've gotten has been around the continuity of test results and how important it is to make sure that our students are making progress in challenging areas and math is one of those and so um, my question is about and I've I've actually true confessions I've asked this and I've gotten an answer and found out actually that I had misunderstood some things about this so I just thought that this is an opportunity for clarity for me for others also in terms of the switch from if we were to make the switch from MCAS to PARC in relation to the changes that we've been making in math in the elementary school the middle schools because this test shift is not going to happen in the high school yet um, and I think it's really important to reiterate that um, but um, can I want to throw it out there can someone talk about what the impact on our following the progress of the n curriculum that we are currently implementing through the student data through their scores can you talk a little bit about what we would lose or gain by switching to the park did my question make sense I can I can start answering it but I'm sure other people can fill in so um, the, the the math curriculum changes have really been happening for the last year and a half maybe it's probably accurate um, even though the frameworks were approved in 2010 um, Reading didn't really start embarking in the changes in, for about a year and a half and it started more at the middle school first the biggest changes at the elementary haven't started till this year when we implemented the new um, math and focus program which is much more aligned to the park and the assessments and the instructional practices that are aligned with the new framework standards than the MCATs. Um, a year ago when we were in, uh, for, the, for the elementary principals that are here, a year ago when we were um, struggling with deciding which math program we were going to go to, we had a very difficult year with math because we were using the um, Chicago math program, everyday math program, which was completely opposite of the direction that we should have been going with the new frameworks. So what was happening is, is that we were taking pieces of the everyday math program, which is a spiral approach, and trying to teach it with the new practices and the new content of the math frameworks. So I, is it safe to say that last year was a very difficult year in terms of teaching elementary math? At the middle school, they also began implementing, you know, I know Chris is here and she can speak to this much more eloquently than I can because she struggled with it through it last year. Um, they were putting together a curriculum last year as they were going through the year to align with the new frameworks. A year ago, I'm talking about, not this current school year. This year, you know, it's like anything else. It takes three years to teach a curriculum or a program effectively. For elementary, this is their first year. For middle school, this is kind of like year 1.5 <laughs> of, of, you know, of, of three years. Um, so the data from MCAS is not going to be relevant data. You're going to get some pieces of information that will be helpful, but the park data which is much more aligned to the frameworks that we are now teaching will be much more relevant data for us. I don't know if that, if you want to add. No, one of the things that I just wanted to um, mention, we, we have in the, over the years been going through the, uh, I'm Chris Freiberg, I'm a middle school math teacher, so at the middle level I can speak. Um, well, as we go over the, the results and the data that comes from MCAS, we struggle every fall. We had struggled with, okay, we're looking at the data, we're looking at the released questions. They don't release for MCAS, they don't release all the questions. Um, and we struggle with 
trying to take something useful out of the data that we get from MCAS because much of what we get out of it is, oh, the, the students messed up because they tripped on a question, tripped on some vocabulary, or, you know, these questions, they could have easily worked backwards from the multiple choice because in MCAS they give you two fairly reasonable answers and then two that, you know, the students really know are, are not in the ballpark. So many times as we looked at the data when we tried to, tried to you know, get out of it, how can we change our instruction, we, we, never, we never got anything valuable at all out of it. And it was also not until the following fall when we were starting up with new students and we didn't, we didn't teach the same students. So, you know, it was, it was kind of a, a situation where we felt like we were um, using valuable time in the fall and coming out with it with, with really nothing instruction-based that was going to help us to improve our, improve um, the situation, mostly because we didn't even really see most of the questions that came from the MCAS in the past several years. With PAC, our hope is um, not only do we know what areas are being focused on um, through the the frameworks um, and what their central um, topics are for each grade, but also the timeliness that the the PAC results um, are supposed to be able to be accessed at an earlier time. Now we don't know what that data is going to look like as far as what exactly they will release, um, but it can't be worse than MCAS, is my opinion. <laughs> Thank you very much. Further questions from the committee? Discussion from the committee? Is there perhaps a motion from a committee member? Mr. Chairman, move to approve the superintendent's recommendation that the Reading Public Schools take the park assessment instead of the MCAS for the 2014-15 school year. Is there a second? I second. Great. Are there any, any more discussion before we take a vote as a committee? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Mr. Robinson? Opposed? And the motion carries 4-1. Again, I can't thank everyone enough for this discussion. Um, Mrs. Broski, I can't thank you enough for your data input. Thank you. And I mean that sincerely. Yeah. Would you like to make a comment? I would like of to course. make a comment. Um, people who know me know that I struggled tremendously about that decision. Um, and I do think it's important in any committee like this to have good debate and to have good open discussion and to have the right to vote your conscience. But I would not want anyone in this room to view that as a lack of respect because I have tremendous respect, tremendous respect for the ability and the input. And this was not an easy dissenting vote for me to make. Um, and I'm a big believer in democratic process. The majority spoken. I'll be the biggest cheerleader. And I want you to know that. I, 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 I want our schools to succeed. So go park. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we actually. Um, are going to close the public part of the meeting. We do have to go into executive session to talk about uh, to protect the litigation position of the body. So thank you very much, Mr. Thank, yeah. thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, move to enter into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and not to return to open session. Is there a second? Mrs. Doxer seconded it. Mrs. Doxer. I actually wanted to just put something else on the table. Am I too late? Should I just save it to the next meeting? Um, no, go ahead. Um, I just loved the process of getting feedback and having people. Thank you. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank work. you. Of having people engaged in the process. And I think that asking people's questions online was really important because then not only we are getting the answers, but also the people that are attentive. And I keep finding out that many more people are watching than I ever dreamed possible. So one of the things that I hope will come from this is ongoing communication, not just when we have a big decision to make, but also something that allows the feedback that develops the relationships between what shouldn't be in us and them it should be an all us. Um, and I'd love to put that on the docket for a future school committee meeting to talk about how we might facilitate those kinds of discussions and that kind of engagement on an ongoing basis. Having televised meetings is part of that, but I'd really love to
to add some face-to-face -face sure uh, relationship um, building and communication and opportunities for questions and that we'll absolutely add it to an agenda of a future meeting to discuss uh, we've tried a little right we've tried with our um, office hours before school committee meetings they're um, lightly attended mm -hmm. at best but we do try to um, present opportunities for people to ask us questions where it isn't in front of a camera um, all obviously all of our email addresses are online and um, and but it's certainly worth the discussion and again that that this whole debate has been excellent if nothing else to meet a lot of Reading residents and to talk to a lot of people so we'll absolutely have it on the agenda for a future meeting to discuss thank you very much but it's fine um, I second. thank you very much <laughs> uh, this is to move into executive session mrs. doxer I second that motion. And, and then you oh, raise your hand. <laughs> say yes. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Crusoe, yes. Mr. Yes. Jeff, yes. And Mrs. Webb, yes. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.